everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Behind us, coming in on trade right now. Um, about, they're calling it a 32 footer. I bet if I tape measure this out, it's closer to 35. Fleetwood Pace Aero, no slide, classic gas class A. Uh, power leveling dual air, both of which were fairly uncommon when this was made. And it's funny, I was just talking to somebody about this earlier today. Like, this thing's not a spring chicken. It's not in flawless condition. Engine runs good, air runs, heat runs, generator fired right up. I was very happy about that. Here's a little sample of the generator firing. But one of the things that I was discussing with somebody earlier is like, there are more older Fleetwoods like this still functioning in the marketplace today than any other manufacturer that I've ever seen. And again, it's not perfect. I'm gonna show you the highs and the lows as we go through. But I mean, considering the age of this thing, I'm pretty impressed. These. These were built and they continue to hold up and they continue to perform. Now, just for reference, we're actually in the rear bedroom right now. We're gonna hop up to living room in a second, but I, I, I like to try to get the, the points of concern out of the way first for folks. Like when I look at that wall right there, that looks to me like that's kind of what it looks like sometimes if there was a little bit of a seam failure and a little bit of water had trickled into the RV. But that little spot is like really the worst I can find. I haven't found wrinkled up, soft, squishy, spongy walls. This soft touch noise canceling ceiling liner up here. There's a couple spots where maybe it could use cleaned a little bit, usually near the air conditioner vents since they get more like air traffic. But I actually can see where someone has done some cleaning on those. These membranes, these soft touch skin liners up here, if the RV had ever had a roof leak, it would be permanently stained. And I know that there's things like kills and stuff that can help get some of that out. In my experience, if you can manage to get a stain out, it's going to look like this where somebody scrubbed the dickens out of it. Um, it, it won't look original, so you'll you'll be tipped off. I can't find scary problem spots like that. Uh, and that's those are the first things I look for, a, spe a used RV that has some kind of age. Now, I did notice, you see how there's like, almost a carpet on top of a carpet. Now, older RVs came with a bunch of carpet, and I know that that is not the favorite thing for a lot of folks. Maybe that's a good DIY project for you. If you wanted to go carpetless, you could sort of do it yourself. Maybe there had been something on the floor here. I've walked all over this RV. I can't find bad wall spots, bad floor spots, bad roof spots. I think maybe it's had a couple ultra brief little seam failures, but I can't find anything significant. And I like these old barrel uh, ceiling wide body no slide jobs because they, they had to be really good and creative with the space. It always feels very open and fresh and inviting, but at the same time, it's like when you're going down the road, it's like party central, you know? like a lot of folks do with a lot of motor homes. They have updated the traditional entertainment center where like this used to have one of those 80 pound fall on your head and kill you televisions that <laughs> has been upgraded to a flat screen. And it looks like they put a swing arm on it. They, You may have noticed they did the same thing in the bedroom. Most recent owners appear to have been storing it under a full RV cover. And since RV covers aren't exactly useful on any RV except something of this exact size, they tend to be included with uh, a camper when it gets traded in like this. So that's an awesome couple, couple hundred bucks of, you know, preventative care, maintenance, and upkeep there. We've got seat belts all over the place in here. It's definitely a couple's rig. You've got a little uh, area there, though, where, you know, you could sleep. The dinette could fold down. And this little half dinette, this is interesting because the, the master chair up front turns around with it when the full RV cover is not in the way. And you can see how there's actually a folding table kind of hidden behind that cover. So this becomes a dinette, which is very cool. I love it whenever one thing does two things in an RV. And I now that I've seen this, it blows me away that I haven't seen more of it. You see it a little bit here and there in motorized. I can't believe I don't see stuff like this more commonly in towable RVs. It just, I, I don't know. It just seems like a, uh, whenever one chair can become two chairs, that's a, I don't know, that's a really cool thing. As I mentioned, this is dual air. We do have uh, like a, a, a power leveling stabilization system over here. Um, I did the little generator test to make sure, oh, you know what I haven't done? Hold on. Yeah, baby. I got to alert the lot that this thing's out here. <laughs> that's Unlike the horn in my car, which is more like a roadrunner, like that's a, like that's a get out of the way, dude, kind of horn. Like you cut me off and I'm going to let you know. But it's it's also the kind of horn that if you give it a quick double tap, like deep, deep, like 
you're just saying hi to the neighbors. Like, it, it has that sort of in-between tone where if you lay on it, it's angry. And if you just tap it, it's not that bad. Do you guys know what I mean? Am I, like, just way off my rocker over here? Um, oh, I just noticed a little thing over here. And there's a couple little spots I've seen a, a, a little bit of wear and tear like this. Like, this cabinet looks like it had pulled down away from the ceiling. It probably got very heavily loaded at some point and then bounced down the road. I'm not going to hide little things like that from you. I'm sure it could probably be reseated a little bit. Um, there's a couple of things, like if we start looking through all the storage here, I noticed that the drawer below the oven that we'll see in just a second, the, the bottom of it was kind of popped out at the back a little bit. My guess is over the years, a lot of cargo got put in this thing and it, it's seen some miles. Actually, what's funny is 61,200 some odd miles that we have on this RV, that's uncommonly high for a motorhome. A lot of motorhomes have very, very low mileage. And it's actually, I think, a beneficial thing to get a few additional miles like this one has on them because people don't realize things like your motors they're not supposed to just sit there not being used they have seals and gaskets and if you're not pumping the fluids and the lubricants and stuff like that through them they will start to rot out and dry rot and have internal engine failures and leaks and stuff and nobody wants to deal with that a couple miles is not necessarily a bad thing engine started right up for me you saw the generator start right up like i said it doesn't really need, it needs just a brief cleaning and maybe a couple little TLC fixes, but there's nothing stopping you from rolling down the road right now. But this bathroom, this bathroom's legit. I believe my uh, good close friend and compatriot, uh, Mr. Uh, MC Hammer, would describe this as too legit to quit. Um, I mean, I think we could be friends. He stopped returning my emails. Do you guys know how to get a hold of MC Hammer? He won't talk to me anymore. Uh, and, and his fan club has kicked me out. Regardless, you look at this, it's nice and spacious, but if we start opening that up, man, that's a massive, huge closet and dresser. That's a huge chunk of storage. Now, a lot of newer motorhomes in the bedroom will have like a bed slide that really opens the whole thing right up. And usually they'll have a closet straight across from it because this older thing didn't have the opportunity for a bed slide. It had to be a little more creative. So instead what you have is just this massive bathroom. And this is back where we actually began our tour just to give you a point of reference. One of the other cool things here is because it's wide body and it has just a north south walk around normal queen there's tons of space. Like, I didn't have to walk sideways to get around this bed over here. It's nice and wide open. It's very comfortable. Sliding door for privacy. The uh, Again, they upgraded the entertainment center to a nice little flat screen TV there. Great breeze windows with day and night shades on both sides of the bed. And then, as is pretty common on an RV of this age, you've got, like, the uh, the dual hanging wardrobe closets, the, the wide open side stands. I, I'm telling you, I'm pretty happy with what I've seen. And I haven't found, like, bad spots in the floor. Now, that being said, again, I think this RV may have suffered a couple little spots every now and then. Because that's new carpet. But maybe somebody just put new carpet on top of old stuff. I don't know. I can't verify that. There's no Carfax for camping. But with the experience I have looking at these, I'm not getting bad vibes. Very little known fact, by the way. MC Hammer's full name uh, MC Hammer and Nails LLC. Not a lot of people know that. I'm, I bet you won't even find it on like a Wikipedia page or nothing. I definitely didn't just make that up. And sometimes with RVs, it's like a tale of two cities where the inside and the outside, like they don't always jive. And on this one, I think they've, I don't know, aged uh, together uh, for lack of a better phrase. They, they both look pretty okay considering the relative age of the RV. And I think pretty okay is about the best you could hope for on something like this. Now, uh, one of the things this has that I love is that driver's jump seat right there. But uh, as we kind of go down through, one of the things that really stuck out at me is like how all of the baggage doors were able to support themselves and, and stay like standing up on this side of the RV, which is something I've noticed I swear, like, every time we get an older used RV in, one or two of the struts on the baggage doors always struggle. Now, full transparency here. You see how most of these are some level of, uh, of pass-through bay. The door side of the RV, where the struts probably got a little bit more use, a couple of those were a little bit tired. Other little things I want you to be aware of here are, like, you can see 
a little bit of a, uh, say, a wrinkle in time in that paneling right there. Again, it's not flawless. You can see a little bit of aging, uh, a little bit of weathering on some of the decals here. But considering the age of the coach, it just doesn't seem that bad. Now, one of the fo uh, folks you're going to meet here is Mr. Randy, the great Randini. Take a bow for us. There we go. Look at the flair and the panache that he's got. What Randy's doing is he's taking off the previous owner's license plate who just took this on trade right here. The uh, skirt on the back there, let's see, this age, this chassis, this engine combination should have about a 5,000 pound tow rating, which is pretty consistent even in today's market. Ooh, I just noticed it looks like they used to have maybe an FMCA plaque over here, Family Motor Coach Association. Those probably need to get a little touch-up beat of sealant. Now, other uh, areas of interest, note, concern, whatever you want to say, is I'm trying to do a better job. Uh, like, a lot of times I'll look at the tires big, hey guys, look at these tires. These tires look fine. I don't, yeah, a lot of times they do look fine. But I want to start getting better about pointing out the age codes on these because once a tire is about 10 years old, you should be replacing it. I think these tires uh, are, are, are definitely like they're they're not weather checked by any stretch of the imagination they look fine in that regard and they they look like they got plenty of tread left on the sneakers but the dot age code doesn't even follow modern standards which tells me these are probably closer to 20 year old tires than 10 year old tires which is actually in a way almost confidence inspiring because it means that the previous owners kept this thing out of the sun quite a bit but it also means that the tires are very old so if your plans were to do some serious cross-country trekking uh, on tires like this, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. And I would recommend keeping that information kind of in your pocket as you know, you're, you're setting a budget for yourself on your RV purchase. Now, if what you were doing is mostly just storing it in a barn and breaking it out for like the local race day or something like that, maybe at your discretion, you would say, eh, I could, I, I could let these ride a little bit. That's up to you though. Obviously, I can't recommend that. I'm just saying I know people are going to. And the roof actually looks almost exactly as I predicted it would. Um, older RVs like this, when the uh, traditional rubberized roof membrane gets a little bit aged, something a lot of people do, especially if the RV had suffered a leak at some point, which I think this RV has suffered some small spots of water damage over the years. And it looks like maybe there's a patch under, under the seal over there. So like maybe a tree branch caught it, but they go through, people will tend to hit these with like a big seal coat, just to make sure that nothing's getting through it after they've already done some good seal work. Now you can see again, double air, you got the max air vent covers over the bathroom and the kitchen. And then you're looking at this metal grate on top of that uh, Coleman AC shroud. And you might be going, what is that thing? Now keep in mind, it's an aged RV. The shroud's got a little bit of age to it. But that thing right here, that actually used to be a small little battery tending solar panel that probably due to age or again, potentially a tree branch is just simply no longer with us. Is the roof like the rest of the RV? Is it flawless? No. Is it in pretty good shape considering the age of the RV? I think so. I've walked all around this roof two or three times now. I can't find any big scary soft spots. It seems pretty sound to me. So what do you guys think? Would that be a fun little weekend runaround rig right there? Uh, what would you use it for? Like a, a, a day at the racetrack? Would you pull a little horse trailer behind it, go to a, like a little local barrels or speed event? That's kind of what I grew up doing actually. I sort of grew up in the saddle. I. I wasn't born the RV nerd, it just kind of happened over time. Just funny the way that life takes us down different paths. And that's this thing. If this thing could talk, I just, I imagine the stories it would have to share. That's what I always think about when I see something like this. But we got a namer. And it seems like older RVs get named Bertha a lot. We got to name this thing. Give me a name in the comment section and we'll see which one kind of feels right to us. I'd love to hear it. And of course, if you like to go camping, she's for sale too. I should mention that, I suppose. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone.